Welcome to Wrestle Maniac on Bloodbath and Beyond. Written and directed by Jesse Baggett, starring Jeremy Radin, Layla Milani, and Rey Mysterio Sr. Russell Maniac is about a group of people traveling through Mexico looking for the perfect place to shoot their porno. They find it at the abandoned ghost town, which is home of the legendary killer luchador known as El Mascarado. So what did we like? I'm gonna kick things off with Rey Mysterio Sr. I absolutely loved him as a killer because being a fan of wrestling and having a luchador serial killer is just so cool. He's essentially a science experiment, and <laughs> now he's hunting down people and removing their faces like he would masks, like luchadors would in a wrestling ring. And speaking of this, I'm gonna retire this little gimmick right now, because I want a drink. I really enjoy the chemistry between some of these characters. We had your typical douchebag, your stoner burnout, your bunch of sluts, I guess, and the guy who knows what's going on. And some of the way they fed off each other it was pretty hilarious. What I also liked is the typical sluts. Well, they were porn stars. <laughs> One was actually like really, really strong. Dallas, played by Layla Milani. She was actually like kicking the shit out of people. And it was pretty cool to see that the bigger guy, Steve, played by Jeremy Radden, was not just the funny guy. Like he was the strong character in the movie. Uh, he was a character with actually a background in this luchador culture. Even right at the beginning, he like busts out his awesome mask and we get to see like, oh man, he's gonna get some sweet wrestling time. And it was cool because Alphonse had a sweet porn star mustache. I was digging it. He was one of the biggest douchebags that we've seen. Like he was just a complete dickhead. There was no redeeming quality and they made sure that you knew it. Like, it was especially great because they gave him the longest death and it was felt very satisfying. El Mascarado just picks this guy up and throws him around a fucking room for maybe two minutes. The, the gore was great. All the special effects that they had were fantastic. I really enjoyed the cinematography in this film. Being in a ghost town, they really utilized not just like the long takes, but how they shot the space between the buildings and in the hallways. How the sound actually played a lot into it. Like it really built up suspense when it needed to. And even though the kills were off screen, we kind of got to hear the commotion that was going on, which made it a lot more clear without actually showing the effect. I really like the pacing in this movie. Essentially, you get to know the characters, they get through a lot of exposition, and then when the big chases start to happen, they don't stop until like the end. I thought that was pretty nice, even though we had a very small cast. Usually it's like a, you get a build up of like tons of exposition and then the vast, last like 20 minutes are tons of deaths. But it was really spread out and the way they did it was really well done. So what didn't we like? I actually thought it was a cop out that the lights came on in the city. I, I really wish they kind of would have used uh, like flames or like torches to kind of light it because it is like an older town. So I think that would have added a little bit to the atmosphere. My biggest dislike is the fact that we did not have a single wrestling move. I wanted tombstone pile drivers to neck snapping. I wanted power bombs through tables. I wanted neck breakers. I wanted suplexes. Hey, sorry, you did get a backbreaker. It would have been cooler if he just put her in like a, the Mexican surfboard submission move and just ripped her legs and arms off. Cause like Daniel Bryan does it now and it's pretty painful, but if like he did this to her, oh, that would have been so cool. He'd be out of the WWE immediately. <laughs> I didn't like that we didn't see the showdown that we wanted to see with Steve, who established himself as both a Mexican and a wrestler with an El Tigre luchador mask. And he even put it on to battle El Mascarado in El Mascarado's ring. And the moment he did that, the camera just slowly <laughs> takes its time down the hallway to get to the ring. And by that point, Steve's already fucking almost toast. Steve should have went up there and did a moonsault or like a 450 splash, anything. If it was a smaller, maybe more athletic <laughs> wrestling type of guy, maybe we could have gotten moonsaults. We don't, I don't think don't, Steve could do a moonsault. Steve could do it. Steve could do it if he's got... Vader time in his blood, because Vader used to do the Vader salt, where he would flip off the ropes. Vader did moon salt. Yes, he did. No fucking yes, way. Yes, he did. That guy's Vader cute. bomb to Vader salt. It's time. It's time. It's, it's Vader, Vader time. time. <laughs> I don't know if the YouTube comments allow it, but can you post gifs of Vader doing like <laughs> moon salts for me in the comments? Because that'd be great. <laughs> Now it's time for our final thoughts and ratings. WrestleManiac was actually a really good time. It was cool, they, it was very self-aware. We had characters that we'd usually see in horror movies playing different roles. 
which was really a shock to me. We had a really cool killer, though he should have done a lot more wrestling moves, and there should have been a lot more wrestling involvement, I think, in a movie called WrestleManiac. But for the most part, I really, really enjoyed myself. So I'm gonna give this three nods to horror via a bumper sticker out of five. I had high hopes for WrestleManiac. I was really excited to see some sweet kills via wrestling moves, but that's not what we got. We got one kill via sweet wrestling moves, and other off-screen kills, and a little references to wrestling. So I really wish there was more of that involved in a movie that was based around wrestling. I really wish they did more with the plotline with Steven. They had all the opportunity, but I think they missed the mark on that. Other than that, I thought the gore was great. I thought the way they did the lighting and the scenery was amazing, and they really found an excellent location to shoot this film. So with all that said, I'm gonna have to give this movie two professional plumbers out of five. Did somebody call a plumber? WrestleManiac, I had such high hopes for you, and as a huge wrestling fan, I was so looking forward to sweet wrestling deaths and you didn't have it, and it was a huge letdown. But you were shot nicely, the story was cool, and Rey Mysterio Sr. as a luchador killer is awesome. So that being said, I'm going to give this film two and a half Jurassic Park references out of five. That's suitable because you kind of look like Grant right now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just a shirtless Grant. <laughs> as always, thank you for watching. Who do you think is gonna win? At WrestleMania. How's The Undertaker coming back? He's coming back against Bray Wyatt. Is he going to start his countdown again? Nah, Wyatt's got this one. They're passing the torch. But the real question is, is Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns going the distance? And is Seth Rollins going to cash in that Money in the Bank briefcase to take the title to whoever wins that match? I'm hoping he does, because I like to roll with the Rollins. And Daniel Bryan will be IC champ. Well, you've heard our thoughts on WrestleMania. Tell us your thoughts on WrestleMania. Holla at your boys. And subscribe if you feel like it.